Hey everybody, Leah Freeman here with Lanza Healing Hair Care. And I first wanna thank Behind the Chair for allowing us this time to share with your audience a great technique that we're currently using Behind the Chair to gain not just a lot of highlighting time, but a lot less time focus-wise when it comes to actually the technique. So I'm doing Julia's color now. And later on today, make sure you check out our Behind the Chair um, look check check out stories and also my instagram and you can see julia's before picture and you'll also get the chance to see her after so what i want to do is because of time i've already started the technique but i want to share something with you that i would normally do if i was actually doing her behind the chair so what i did first is i first eliminated both the front or the top of the head the front of the hairline the right side the back left quadrant right quadrant right front and again, the top. So the idea is we're splitting the head into several different areas so that way we can work more effectively and more efficiently. So at this point, she wants to be lighter and the way I'm gonna lay the color into the hair is gonna give me maximum lightness, minimal application, which is important, especially if we're in a time crunch. So with that, what I did first is I took from the Prada Ridge to the base of the crown completely out. Now this focal front area, she wants to be super, super light. So you take your comb and you find that second area of the fringe and you find that high point. I went from high point right to left side. And because she wears her hair like a curtain fringe, I wanna make sure that I eliminate this whole entire area. So for later, the last thing I'll do is a section because as we know, this area gets the lightest, the quickest being it sits on the skin and also the section tends to be a little bit finer. From the Prada Ridge down, high point of the ear all the way down and then all the way from base of the crown all the way right to left side. I will make sure to include a head form on my Instagram stories tomorrow so you guys can actually have the head form completed for yourself too for follow up. So what we have in our bowls here is I have lines of powder to colorizer. I have 10 volume in one bowl and 20 volume in the other. Being that 50% of her hair is virgin and the other 50% definitely is not. So I know Julia, I know uh, her history in her hair. She gets a lot of color services done. So using that 10 volume on the ends is gonna help preserve those ends. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start in the corner nape here. And what I wanna do is I wanna hold the hair out pretty taut and pull. Now, whenever I do any type of base foils, anything that's on the skin, I tend to use more of the toe of the comb versus um, you know, the pick of the comb. So I'll take the toe of the comb and I'll begin to zigzag out my section. Um, first, I want to thank Belle for helping me out here. Thank you, girl, for uh, being my my videographer today. Um, Belle does a lot of my videoing for me, so um, she's got really super strong arms. And I'm actually going to have Ashley. Ashley, if you don't mind stepping over, Ashley's going to help me hold hair just so you guys have um, easier access to see versus me using clips. Um, Ashley's actually one of our stylists at our salon, and I will make sure to share her Instagram handle with you. She is a sick um, hair, uh, fantasy hair colorist. She does some insane stuff. So I'll make sure to share that uh, handle with you guys here in a few minutes. So with that, I'm in the base of the nape. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my 20 volume on the top. And as you can see, I always go down and really softly. I never tend to go in firm with the brush. I always go on the side. By going on the side, I'm guaranteeing a softer line of demarcation. Even if I go in and do a root shadow, I want to make less work for myself. On the mid lengths and ends, I'm going to go ahead and follow up with 10 volume powder. So I have my 20 volume on top, my 10 on the, on the bottom. You'll also notice too that I'm using embossed foils. So something I learned from one of the girls I work with here, uh, her name's Courtney. Um, she's C Projects on Instagram. Um, she is a big time baby light baby lighter in our salon. She has a lot of glitter lights. And what she loves about using the embossed foils, she says you get her to the scalp. And I didn't believe her, and you do. So using the embossed foils, you definitely can get a lot tighter to the scalp because the foils are almost virtually weightless. So if you're really trying to get in tight, try the embossed foils. They're a little bit difficult to use in the beginning, but once you get the hang of them, they're freaking amazing. So what I love about these embossed foils is they actually um, get cut to length. So I use the quality touch one so I can actually cut the length of the hair. Remember, whenever you're doing foil placement, you always want to make sure your length of your foil matches your hair so that way your application is always seamless. I'm going through and I am doing a bit of a baby weave. Um, I'm going to go up on a diagonal back pattern. This is going to help the swing towards the face and maximum lightness. So by going diagonal back, I have a really beautiful swing sticking on the top here utilizing my 20 volume, pushing my color on. As you can see, I'm really pushing 
that to colorize around towards the base. Even though I'm going to go back in and root smudge, I still want to keep it soft. And then utilizing my 10 volume to the end. Now you can see by using the board, I'm also getting a nice flat application. This is going to help with guaranteeing good lightness on the top and the bottom of the strand. You'll also notice too that I'm taking super fine sections. The finer the section, the more the lift. So I'm looking to have really super lights amount of lift um, in her hair. And being that she's light naturally, I can fold the foils versus back to back. So she was as dark as I was. I would definitely suggest leaving my foils open and just sandwiching the foils. But being that she's really light, folding the foils works really well. And the lightness you can gain is amazing. And plus two, you can gain lightness with control. Now, if someone's really, really dark, I would suggest applying your decolorizer again towards the base. Same way, using your 20 volume, still sticking with fine sections, using your 10 volume powder on the ends, but instead of actually folding my foil up, I would sandwich another foil on top and let that product process appropriately, completely flat, which is getting a nice clean lift. You'll also notice too, I don't fold my foils in the corner. If I do, I slightly do it or I just pinch the foils. I'm not a big foil folder. It's not right, wrong, or different. It's just the way I do it. So don't look at it as being a, a good thing or a bad thing or why does she do it? So. I'm continuing up the head doing diagonal back. Once I get to the top of the ear, this is gonna be my last diagonal back because it's the last area of the head where you still get swing out of a diagonal. Now, if you want to gain even more brightness through the mid lengths and ends, you could go in between the foils and hand paint with some like our Lonza clay decolorizer and like 40 volume to get some really beautiful lightness just by pulling all the hair down horizontally. And you can apply in freehand some clay through those ends if you want to get a lot more brightness out of it. So again, using my 20 volume on the top, finishing up with my 10 volume on those ends. This is just going to help with guaranteeing a lot of uh, gentleness on the ends. If you even want to have continued gentleness, I recommend putting in up to 10 grams. I always say five grams, but I prefer 10 grams in a 30 gram formula of our trauma treatment. That's going to help you with additional um, conditioning. So now that I've done my diagonal backs, uh, and this is gonna create that swing towards the face, I'm now at that area of the head where everything starts to fall flat. So I wanna go into horizontal pattern. So I'm gonna go straight across and cut off, leaving that triangle out. Now here's what's important about depth. So whenever we're highlighting and we wanna create depth in the interior, what I see a lot of people do is they go back and add depth then afterwards. So we make the hair light and then we go back in and add the darkness. Here is a cool tip. Instead of going back in and putting the depth in, let's put the depth in in the foil. So I'm going to do a slice. I'm going to skip a section and take another slice. By leaving these pockets of depth out, it's going to make these foils pop like crazy. So to create a really beautiful amount of brightness through this area, and also too, it's going to create really beautiful dimension, but yet a lot of brightness at the base. So again, using my 20 volume at the top powder lightener, overlapping slightly with my 10 volume to those ends. Just remember key things, whenever you're doing correct color surfaces or highlighting surfaces, the finer the section, the cleaner the lift, especially if the hair is previously color treated. You guys are getting a picture of Hudson, I think, because Belle's laughing. Say hi to Hudson, everyone. Hudson's our salon dog. He visits us only on Fridays. Everybody loves a good dog. Okay, so again, slice, skip a section. Now, mind you too, depending on what you want to do, you could do a really severe slice, a small skip, and a miniature slice, whatever you want to do. But creating those pockets of depth in the hair is going to make your highlights pop. So really good suggestion, especially when you're doing retouches on blondes with an immense amount of outgrowth, yet the ends are really blown out. Keeping that little bit of depth is so important towards that base area. So again, another horizontal placement, just because where we're sitting at, turn volume on the ends, fold up. And you guys can see how quickly I'm running through this technique. Thanks, Ash. Your nails look amazing, by the way. Must be a Gina. Get tipsy now. Yeah, get tipsy, she's amazing. I think all my whole staff like employs her, I swear. Okay, another one, slice, skip. I'm gonna do a mid slice and another one. Big gaping holes in the center. Can everyone see that? Again, using my board, I'm going to turn you. Um, using the board is 
not a crutch. I've heard I've heard people say it's a crutch. I seriously believe it's a it's a if it is a crutch, it's a great crutch. In my in my um, it, where I see uh, using a board comes into play. Uh, what I love about it is it keeps my sections flat. It makes everything very visual, and I also can see too how good my application is. All right, we're coming up on another section here. Okay, now we're at the high point of right below the crown at the high point of the back of the head. So now we can go back into diagonals. By going back into diagonals, we're gaining a lot of coverage. As you can see, as I pull this out, see how this hair is gonna fall? If I put a foot here, it's gonna cover this whole entire section. So we've gone from diagonals into three horizontals back into diagonals. It's gonna create a great swing. It's almost like drapes. So you have drapes on the right side of the window, drapes on the left side of the window. When the windows are open, you see that panel of lights in the center. When the windows are closed, the drapes cover right to left side. So again, slice, skip, big section, slice. Belle, do we have any questions? We do not. Okay, excellent. Uh, actually, Leah, this is John Beyer with Behind the Chair. We actually do have a, a few questions for you. Oh, hi, John. Hello. Um, one of them is, excellent. do the foils help grip the hair as uh, to keep in place? That's a great question, John. And thank you for asking that question. I don't know who asked it, but a uh, great question. And the answer is yes. So when you use an embossed foil, it actually gravitates the product to it and doesn't allow the product to slip off. So um, it actually just gives it almost more glue to the paper. So um, not only is the foil itself gritty, but it holds onto a lot more product, which in return, the hair holds onto even harder. So that's why you're able to get a really tight uh, grip with the foil. Great question. Thank you for that. John, what was That's, the other one? Uh, Carrie Lee Bradbury asks, uh, do you not cross-contaminate the 10 and 20 volume when you are folding the foil up? Uh, that's a great question. So the answer is no, based on the fact that when I fold the ends up, the ends stay together. And this next section, so your 20 volume is about here. So when I'm folding up, I'm pretty much keeping them a little bit separate. There might be a little bit of contamination, but not nearly as much contamination would be if I pulled the 20 volume all the way straight through, or I should say damage would be if I pulled um, the whole section through. Another great question. If you watch here, I'll show you. So when I'm folding, you'll see I'm pretty much keeping that 10 volume covered, and then there's your 20 volume. All right, so now at the top section. Um, John, was there any other questions? You are all caught up for the moment. Sounds like no, oh yes, yes. Oh, perfect. All right, and please guys, if you have any questions, continue to ask, that's what we're here for. We wanna make sure that all of your questions are answered. All right, so I'm at that top portion of the section. You're right at the Prado Ridge. Again, I'm utilizing my skip pattern, keeping that horizontal section there, pulling into my 10 volume for those ends. Remember peroxide, when you're choosing it, not only determines the amount of lift you can get out of your product, it's more or less about the amount of time that lift takes. So that's where peroxide becomes to be really dangerous to hair. So maybe people say, oh, I don't ever use 40 volume. It's like, if you're just doing a full, full few foils, sometimes 40 volume could be a better option than leaving your decolorizer on for a longer period of time. So um, I tend to go a little more gentle with my decolorizer as I've gotten uh, more involved in our industry, just based on what I see people do to their hair, uh, especially like with hairlines and stuff, girls that are using flat irons all the time. Even these circumstances here, when hair lays on the face, you'll see me go more to a 10 volume just because the heat of the scalp and the heat of the face is gonna allow that, um, that lightener to lift really, really, really fast. So whenever I do anything on the skin, you'll see me use more 10 volume and 20 volume everywhere else too, especially on a pull through. So just some key tips to think about. Remember foils are not only a place to apply the colorizer, but they also are heat conductors. So sorry about that, Belle. Uh, she literally told me to be careful with your elbows and I just smacked the camera. Um, I'm doing baby lights right now, going on a diagonal back around the face and I'll tell you more about foils in a second. Taking fine sections, keeping those sections in between. I've eliminated the board at this point. You could use the board still if you'd like to. Um, you can see how tight I can get in with that foil and that air coming through that foil pushes that foil out a little bit. I'm gonna continue using 10 volume on these little hairs around the face just because these are the areas that we tend to damage the most with brushing, blow drying, flat ironing. 
So these areas lift naturally quicker. So as the hair gets longer, that's when I know I can go more, back to more aggressive options. So hair starting to get longer. So I'm gonna start using my 20 volume again. Again, baby lights going diagonal back. This is a great, really beautiful swing right to left side. And now that I have a little more length, I'm gonna go into my longer foil. So again, I'm gonna use 20 volume here at the top. You'll see too, I'm using a longer bristle brush versus a short bristle brush. Your longer bristle brushes, your longer bristle brushes, they give a, they give a very, um, almost erratic diffusion. So make sure too, when you're choosing your brushes, and Belle will tell you this, working with me as long as she has, I'm very particular about my brushes. You're not allowed to laugh, Ashley. It's true, you are. She's like, she a pain in the rear end when it comes to her brushes. I'll go through the drawer. I am too. I don't, I just, I'm particular about brushes. If my brushes and the bristles are pointing north, south, east, and west, there's only one place for that brush, and it is the garbage. <laughs> See? Bell even said it. belongs in the garbage. They all know. We can't have bad brushes. Okay, so again, going diagonal back, starting with my 20 volume at the top, pushing it down. Also, too, when you use those long bristle brushes, it just gives a soft erratic diffusion again and then finishing off with my 10 volume on the ends. Just remember too guys, when you guys are choosing to use hand paint or foils, especially when you're trying to get these um, really multi-dimensional colors, um, foils just basically buy you time. So, so all right, now we're at the space here where we're going diagonal back and we're at a place now where the hair is starting to fall in this direction versus forward. So you guys see where we're losing the swing. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this corner off and I'm gonna finish going up the side of the head horizontally. Now, if you wanted to, you could add and just do that skip, which I'm gonna do, because I wanna add that depth of the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing that skip placement that we did in the back, now in the corners. So towards the top, 20 volume, 10 volume in the ends. And just, just key to point too, guys, when you guys are doing hair that's really super color treated, outside of, um, and I mean color treated, like dark color treated, and you're trying to get it really, really light, keeping those foils open too will help you get, you can get a couple levels lighter, believe it or not, when you sandwich foils versus when you fold. You'd be surprised how decolorizer, when it works by itself in one area, can get really aggressive, and aggressive in a, in a positive manner. Um, also, too, when you guys are choosing your products, I get asked this question all the time. So um, I don't know what to use. Should I use powder? Should I use cream? Should I use clay? So when you're trying to get hair really, really, really super light and really, really clean and the hair is really, really dark, you know, more than four to five levels of lift, it needs to go into a foil. A hand paint, you're not going to get the lift out of it. Maybe the third or fourth application you will, but the first or second application, most likely not. Um, it's really, really hard to lift through dark hair on with clays. So in that circumstance, if the hair is really, really dark, I would move more towards a powder. Now, if the hair is light, like someone like Ashley, natural level seven, someone like Julia, they don't have, a, not like Ashley, I should say, if they don't have a lot of color on their hair and they're very uncolor treated, clays are great for that. If they're very color treated, like in an Ashley circumstance or, or Julia or someone like myself or Belle, who you cannot see uh, behind the camera, but someone who's got a lot of color on their hair, that's when you want to move to powders. Powders are meant to remove color. That's their, that's their main, like they, they literally are superior. That's like their they're when their job and they're showcasing something and they're like, I'm going to show you the best I got. That's when they're going to do that. So powders are really great when you're dealing with super over color treated hair and corrective processes. Clays are good on more virgin hairs, um, lighter levels of hair if you're trying to get light or darker levels of hair if you're trying to main, re, maintain caramely. Um, creams though, creams are great if you're putting something on the base or the hair super, super fine. So if you have a customer that has that really fine, I like to call it frog fur hair, where the hair is like, you can blow on it and it breaks. That's when you want to go more towards creams. Creams have emollients in them. For example, our cream has a whole oil in it. So that's going to help condition the hair before going in and creating further damage. 
So I'm now at the top of the head, and this is that area that's right at the base of the crown. I'm starting to go in diagonally. Whether you want to go diagonal from the left or the right, it doesn't make a difference. Um, but I'm going to start here on the right side just because I'm right-handed. At this point, I'm going to do something called what I know Courtney likes to refer to as glitter lights. Really super fine pieces of lightness going towards the base. This is going to create that pop of lightness towards her scalp without stripiness. So when you have customers that come in and they say, I want to be lighter, but I hate when I look stripy. These little baby lights are beautiful for that. And then going back in and doing that root shadow is where um, you're going to drop out that super stripy feel. So you get a, a gas that sits in your chair and you do her highlights and you're blowing her out and you're like, she looks really, really stripy. Just go in and do a really beautiful root shadow. You can actually take the stripe out of the hair. So stripiness happens because of contrast more than placement normally. So by doing that root shadow, that will help with that. So I've done two going diagonally back. I'm gonna do another two now going diagonally back. Diagonal backs right now live on the side of the head being where I'm sitting. Again, I'm gonna just take these two little foils. I'm gonna go through and do a microweave here. Place this foil in. Hey, Leah. Again, matching the length of my foil. And I gotta tell you, yes. Uh, we have yes, another John. question from Angela. Would you still use oh, this perfect. pattern and sectioning oh, for really dense, thick hair? Oh, yes, Angela. If anybody, and this is what Julia is, super dense, thick hair. And the answer is yes. This could be great for fine or dense hair. But Angela, what I would change is if the hair was finer, I would leave more hair out in between. Same exact technique. Great question. Any other questions, John? Nope, you're good. We're good? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and – oh, I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm doing my second diagonal back on this side. Now, I do want to say this, too, when I'm doing techniques like this, just because um, I think it's important that we remember this. So you guys saw me do the right side of the head first and then go do the left side of the head. When I'm actually doing hair behind the chair, I don't ever camp on one side. So I like to swing from right to left side like every five to seven minutes. So – I'll start doing a technique on the right side and then I'll go to the left side and then I'll go back to the right side. Then I'll go to the left side. By doing that, I'm going to be guaranteed a nice subtle lift. And if the hair is ready in it's process, I can go ahead and pull those foils. And let me say this, a good time saver is the back of the head is ready and the rest it's not. You could pull those foils out. And what's great about it is let the decolorizer dry. If the decolorizer dries, you're no longer processing. So the versus going through, taking them to shampoo bowl, washing them out, taking all that extra time, not being able to do customers in between, a great time saver is just pull the foils. All right, so now I'm at this high point of the crown. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna do a horizontal. So traditionally what I would see with people here is they would start to go horizontally up the head. That also too could create striping. What I wanna do now is I wanna close in this gap just a little bit further. So I'm going to go back to this right side, do a couple more diagonals or one more diagonal. I just want to close this gap in a little bit. And then we're going to move to horizontal on the horizontal of the round. So I'm going to put one more foil in here. So I can just close in this gap a little bit. And while I'm doing that, um, my lovely assistant is not an assistant. She's one of my uh, amazing stylists at my salon. And I asked her desperately to help me today so that way she could um hold hair for me because she was getting ready to leave for work she's actually done with work today and she was generous enough to stay back so um but i absolutely adore her and i sent her all of my fantasy colors do i not i get these crazy fantasy color girls in my salon they're like i want fantasy here i'm like you need to go to ashley so ashley what is your instagram handle instagram is at ashley Klepich, so it's at a-s-h-l-e-y and then k-l-e-p-i-t-s-c-h so give That's ashley a follow if you guys want to see some sick 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 fashion color hair um as as many of you guys that if you do not follow me i'm leah freeman one if you are following me thank you um i do tip of the day uh at least once or twice a week i've been trying to do it more and more so you guys can get some quick tips that I'm utilizing behind the chair. I put formulas up there all the time and things that we're doing in our salon just to kind of time savers or things that work for us or things that don't work for us. So make sure you give my girl Ashley and myself a follow if you're not. Like I said, if you are, thank you. And 
the good thing about Ashley is, is she does stuff that I would never even think of. So that's what I love about her. Her mind works in the most wildest way. So, all right. So we're at this high point of the head here. I'm going to turn you, Julia, sorry. So this section here, as you guys can see, it's going from here to here. Belle, can you see that section? What I wanted everyone to understand when I say closing the gap is I want the section wide enough where it can still fit into a foil. And at this point, I'm now gonna turn to horizontal with horizontal placement to the room. This is gonna give sheets of color. So I'm gonna go ahead again, baby light up. You guys can see how fine those foils are. Can you guys see that? Yeah. You have another question, Leah, when you're ready. Good. Excellent. Yep, I'm always ready. Okay. Uh, do you raise the volume level of your developer as you work up the head? Great question. And the answer is I do not, but I foil really, really fast. So if you use someone that's a little bit of a slower foiler, I would suggest um, doing that for sure. Suggestion one. Suggestion two is you can also remix. So use less product. So let's just say for example, with Lanza, we recommend using 30 grams of powder to 60 grams of 20 volume. That bowl, if you're sitting there foiling for an hour, is going to go down dramatically in that hour, right? So if you're somebody that is a quicker foiler, you might want to consider remixing or a slower foil, foiler, sorry. Uh, you can remix the product or let the product go dead as you're using it. So um, if you are, again, slow, your product is dying as fast as you're using it. So 20 volume is nowhere near 20 volume in 45 minutes to an hour. So yes, you can remix, but you can also too, maybe, you know, just keep remixing versus changing your peroxide, if that makes any sense. That, uh, any other questions, John? Nope, so far so All right, good. So I'm going up the side, uh, front, top of the head. Nope, good. So I'm going up the top of the the head i'm working in the horizontal as you can see i'm almost done again super baby fine highlights i'm going to go back in later and i'll just give you guys her formula i'm going to probably end up doing 6p as in pearl this is in healing color uh equal parts seven natural violet it's one of my favorite go-to's for a base root smudge um and then on our mid lengths and ends i'm super excited to use one of our newest shades which is our nine violet that is i can tell you this girl's right here she uses a ton of that i'm going to be doing nine yeah, it's your favorite color right now isn't it um nine violet equal parts nine natural violet with a hundred violet all equal parts as her glaze on her mid lengths and ends now that could change depending on how she lifts so hopefully she'll lift that direction but I just suggest to you guys, when you guys are mixing your glazes, and Belle will tell you this, before I mix, I always dry a little bit. It's very deceiving how hair can lift. So before you go in and make that promising glaze, just pick up your guests really quickly, take them to, the, to your station, just dry them a little bit. Sometimes they freak out, it's fine, it's fine. They ask you questions, are you gonna leave it like this? You say, yes, right? All right, so I'm almost finishing up. As you can see, I'm closing in the scap, still on the horizontal. Notice too, I'm not worried about where she parts at because I'm going to go and do that root smudge. So that root smudge is going to take away any lines of demarcation. You'll also notice too, when I'm putting the foils in, I'm also cornering the foils on the corner here away, away from the hairline because I know that I'm going to go in and do the hairline next and I don't want them in the way. So look at Hudson, just sitting over like a good little boy. I have another question. Oh, boy. Everybody needs a salon dog. Yes. I have another question from uh, Mammy. Are you doing a shadow root melt after? I am. So um, I do shadow root melts pretty much probably 90% of my highlights right now, just because that's the trend. Uh, if you asked me five years ago, I don't think I shadow rooted probably two people. You know, it was more or less like you would do shadow root some people um, because it was not quite as popular as now. But that heavy line of demarcation is kind of gone right now when it comes to basing. So in all honesty, if you guys are trying to raise your revenue in your locations, um, by doing a shadow root, you're able to get the highlights close to the base, but you're also maintaining some sort of maintenance versus 
a very ombre or balayage fill. So think about what you can do to your books by doing shadow rooting. It's a really great add-on service. And here's a tip too I always suggest. You always wanna go about two levels darker than their natural color. So at the shadow root, if you wanna create base shadow where it looks significantly darker than who they are, if you wanna keep it natural, you could go one level darker and include one portion of their level in the level. So like, for example, we have Julia here. She wants to maintain her lightness, but she wants to get rid of that stripiness. I wanna, if I go level to level, it's gonna bump her base, right? So it's gonna make her look like she's lighter, but she wants a little bit of shadow, but not darkness. That's where I mix 50% of what her level is and 50% of the level below it. And that's where I get the 7NB, uh, 7P from. All right, John, any other questions? Cause I'm moving to the front. Nope, you're We're whipping killing the technique it. fast. Okay, perfect. All right. So with that, we have finished the whole top of the head here. Uh, so we have the top and sides done. So you can simple amount of foils, but remember too, it's really it's about the placement. Horizontal placement, sheets of fall, swings of fall. Remember, we're thinking about curtains and drapes, curtains and drapes. So how that stuff swings is gonna determine how much lightness there is. Now, she wears her hair in a curtain fringe. So my suggestion is you want to go from the center of the fringe and move backwards. If you go right to left side, one side will be heavier than the other. So I want to go directly standing in front of her, again, using, using uh, the top of my comb. I'm going to zigzag in. Ash, can I hold that to you, mind, babe? Okay, see that fine section? I'm gonna use 10 volume at the base here because again, it's the front of the hairline. The hairline is the most fragile. And it does not need 20 volume. And I'm painting all the way down. I'm gonna go back to back the first couple of sections, keeping the sections super, super fine. Whenever we paint, especially in front of a guest, normally I would be standing right in front of her. Remember, I can feel this foil. I mean, feel that foil, Ashley, is it hotter? Yeah, it's hot. So we all know that foils are heat conductors. So by, by placing that foil down, and notice too, as I push my fingers up into this head, I'm actually pushing the foil back. I can get closer to the retouch. So I'm using my fingers as leverage to really get that foil up tight. Okay, one more. Now, if I wanted to, I could back to back this whole entire thing and make it super, super, super light. But speaking to Julia, that wasn't like she wanted more of a money piece feel. So I'm gonna do that little soft money piece towards the face and then subtly go backwards. Again, pushing my fingers up, making the foil almost smile curving it to the scalp, I can go all the way to the retouch area. Okay, now I'm at this one. I'm gonna take a fine section out. This is important. So when you are starting to go back into highlighting, you wanna go slowly backwards. If you take a big of a you're gonna have a so you want to make sure the section is super, super fine. And you're going to foil through the section first. And you're going to add more and more hair as you go backwards. If you just take a section out and leave a lot of hair in between, it's going to look really super stripy. Could be cool, but not my, what she's looking for. Notice my smile. Look at that smile. Make your foil smile. That's so cute. Make your foil smile. That could be a tagline for a t-shirt. That would be like Jenna's tagline. Yeah. Okay, so again, I wanna add 50% more or 25% more hair than the last foil in between the section. And notice too, I'm taking my comb to the scalp, not on the ends. I wanna keep the foil close to the retouch area. So if you want the hair to be very, very tight where the foil fits in, you wanna use the, the top of the comb, the tail of the comb really tight in. If you want outgrowth, you wanna go further out.
again. Let us add a little more hair. All right, guys, we're coming back to the last two foils. If, does anybody have any questions they want to ask before we do our recap and let you guys go on your merry ways? Uh, no questions, but you are getting a lot of emojis and a lot of people saying, I was about to ask a question, but she just answered it. Oh, good. Excellent. Good, good, good. Facilitation 101. That's good. I like to hear that, John. And by the way, everybody, uh, let's let's get a shout out to John. He was helping out with some technical difficulties about 20 minutes before we went on. So he was able to make this live happen because it almost did not happen. So thank you, John, for that and being patient with me and Belle today. You're always gracious. It's my All pleasure. Right, so we're getting to that last foil here. So, so we're at our last foil. Now you guys probably noticed too, I'm going in pretty deliberate with my brush. I, I really want that touch up feel around the face. So, all right, Julia, do you want to see? Probably. All right, so let's do a quick recap of what we did uh, today. So first and foremost, we took the top of the head out. We took the fringe area out, starting from the high point of the fringe down, keeping that section in. Now, if she did not have a curtain fringe, I would go further right to right to left side. But being that her curtain fringe is in the center and she always wears her hair that way, I want to keep that lightness there. So it's important to know where they wear their fringe before you highlight them. Took the side forward out, side forward out putting the head down the back from the base of the crown. So base of the crown back, right side we did first. Now, if I was working behind the chair, I would go right to left side every five to seven minutes. Diagonal back, diagonal back, diagonal back until we got to the top of the ear. That's where the change of direction happens. Here we did horizontal placement, right? And then as we get the change of direction again, we went back to diagonal. These are your drapes, here are your sheets, drapes and sheets. That's what covers the center of your windows. Then on the top of the head, we had a close in the gaps. We did a couple diagonals and then we finish up with horizontal over the whole top of the head, doing diagonals on the side until we hit the high point of the air and again, turn to sheets. And then we finish off with sheets around the face. So remember, whenever you're placing your foils, look at your actual lines and see where that hair is going to live. And that tells you where your lightness will live the best. We're going to let Julia process. She processes it actually pretty quickly. So about 20, 25 minutes. We're going to go in and root smudger, which I'll make sure I'll put on my story so you guys can see how I do a root smudge. But here's a tip too. Uh, if you actually check out my Instagram I did a root smudge a couple of days ago. If you're doing root smudges that are four and five levels darker, see what I do. It's way different. I tend to put my glazes on from scalp to end first, and then I do my root smudges when the glaze is on. It's going to help with spotting on the mid links and ends. So when you're doing those really super variant colors where they're very, very, very aggressive, you want to do your all over color first, keep it on, and then do your darker base second. There you go, Ash. Ashley does that too, so which is great. On behalf of Lonza Healing Hair Care, thank you so much behind the chair for taking your time with us today. I hope you guys learned something. Like I said, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at Leah Freeman One, and that's on Instagram. At Lonza, we have something called the Lonza 24 that we always respond within 24 seconds, 24 minutes, or 24 hours. If you have any other questions about Lonza, you can also reach out to Lonza Hair Care. So make sure you guys give them a follow too. Again, thank you guys so much. I hope to see you guys in person at the BTC show, um, which I believe is in August, if I remember correctly. Um, it's on my book, so I cannot wait to go. It's going to be our first in-person show. So uh, again, any questions, please feel free to reach out. And again, thank you guys so much. And check out my Instagram later, and you will see Julia's beautiful color done for you. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.